Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Aaron Dobos. I'm here in beautiful Colorado. Um, delighted to be able to uh, give you this webinar on modeling shading systems in SAM. Um, I'm the technical lead for the SAM software and engineering, um, and so I've been working on SAM for the last six years, so probably responsible for all the good and bad things um, in our software that you might be familiar with. Um, my colleague Janine Freeman is here in the room with me, um, and she'll be helping answer any questions through the chat window during the presentation. Um, and uh, I think more people are joining, but I think they'll be able to catch up. So a few um, uh, items of, of housekeeping. Um, this is the last of six webinars we've done this in, in the last year. Um, you can see the schedule there, so if you miss any of the previous webinars, you're welcome to go to our SAM website and where you can uh, view um, the recorded sessions with the audio and the slides. So you're, we're, we encourage you to do that if any of those topics are, would be of help to you. Um, we anticipate uh, having another series of webinars um, in, in the coming year, and we'll make that schedule available soon. Um, as you probably discovered, you have to register to participate, but it's free. Um, and uh, you can find more information about our webinar series learning page on the SAM website. Um, and just so you know, all, all webinars are recorded. So um, you know, if you have a question you want to answer, just uh, want to ask, just know that um, that that will be recorded. Um, the the last thing I'll mention is that um, uh, well we'll just get started oh what I was going to questions during the chat window and there'll be a time for questions and questions and answers uh, at the end of the session um, the webinar today is really focused on um, how to model shading losses in the SAM software. Um, we're going to go through this in three parts. First, I'm going to provide a bit of a review of all the options for doing shading modeling in SAM. Um, and then the majority of the presentation is going to be to introduce this new uh, 3D shade calculator that we've added to SAM this last year. Um, and then I'm going to go through a live demonstration where you'll see how to set up a system with shading instructions in the 3D shade calculator and then estimate how much energy is lost for a PV system uh, for that particular shading situation. Um, before we go into the shading, I wanted to um, make a note about some results that we've put, it, put together on, into a short pre-recorded webinar on our website. As if you're familiar with modeling PV systems, you'll know that there are many um, tools out there um, that can uh, do PV modeling, and um, each tool has a module database uh, that characterizes the uh, different operating parameters of, of modules. And so we wanted to do a bit of a comparison between a module databases to see how much variation there is between, um, between tools for the same modules. And uh, luckily, we found that there's actually a pretty low uh, variation between the um, module spec sheet parameters uh, between the four databases that we compared. Um, anyways, I'm not going to spend any more time on this, but if, for more information, you can uh, look at that half an hour webinar that's recorded and available on the same website uh, down at the bottom there. Okay, so modeling shading losses in SAM. The first thing uh, I'll mention is that this webinar is going to be using the latest um, internal version of SAM that we've been developing. Um, it's a brand new version of SAM. The user interface has been simplified significantly, um, but we've added a lot of powerful capabilities to the tool. So this version hasn't been released to the public yet, but we anticipate making a beta version of it available in the next month or so. So hopefully you all look forward to that. Uh, we'll be sending out an announcement when that's, when that's available. 
Um, conceptually, though, the the shading um, the shading inputs, other than the new 3D shading calculator, they're basically the same as in the current publicly available version of SAM. So, where to enter shading data um, on the on the version of SAM that you might have on your installed on your computer right now, all of that information would go onto the subarrays page where you specify how the PV system is set up. In the new version, all the shading has been put onto the what we've called the shading input page, where you can access either the 3D shading calculator, um, the external shading data inputs, or the self shading calculator. So. There's several ways to enter shading uh, factors into SAM. So the, I'm going to approach this from the perspective of how, in what situation would you want to use this. The external shading factors can really be used for any type of system, residential, commercial, your utility scale. But the idea is that you can you get the shading loss information from some other software or from measurements such as a SunEye device or a solar pathfinder device. And there are four ways to enter um, shading data into the tool in this mode. Either an hourly set of shading losses. You can specify shading losses by um, the month of the year and the hour of the day. Um, I think that's probably the most popular and easiest to use. Um, and it's reasonably ad accurate considering the typical uncertainties that you see in shading loss measurements. Um, there's other two options for solar azimuth and altitude, um, so basically by sun position. Um, and there's also a constant diffuse shading loss factor. Um, fr from the screen, you can see that there's ways to import shading data calculated um, by either PV Syst or, or from the SunEye or Solar Pathfinder tools. And like I said, this is applicable to basically any type of system, small or large. It's really generic. Um, which means that it can be applied to a lot of situations, but sometimes it's more challenging to come by the data that you need to put in here. The second way to uh, model shading losses in SAM is by using our self-shading calculator. And this, this option is really primarily designed for large commercial rooftop or utility scale installations that are arranged in a regular pattern where one row of modules shades the next row of modules. Um, for for res small residential systems, um, it's not necessarily the best tool because it makes some assumptions about uh, end losses and, and things that happen at the edge of the array that are fine for large systems. But you can, if you do have self-shading in a residential system, you can still use the 3D shading calculator that we're going to talk about um, later in the presentation. And um, so in, in the current version of SAM that's available publicly, this is only a, a, available for one axis, oh, sorry, for fixed tilt systems. But in the new version of SAM, we've made self-shading available for one axis trackers as well um, when they're not backtracking. And generally, you specify the, the configuration of each, rotate, uh, you know, of each um, uh, set of modules um, and, you know, similar to how, how it's shown in the picture there. And there's a reference for, for the algorithm if, if you're interested. There's also a lot more documentation on um, what this self-shading calculator is doing in the SAM reference manual. And now to the, to the um, main part of the presentation. So we've added the 3D shading calculator to the upcoming version of SAM. And essentially, it lets you enter in a um, user interactive way, information about trees and houses and and other obstructions that you might have in the scene. Um, it lets you specify where your PV panels are, and then it'll calculate um, a month by hour shading loss table that then goes into the um, into the table that I showed two slides previous. Okay, so. Uh, let's go into the 3D shade calculator in a little bit more detail. So just a little background. Um, in 2013, we had a technical review committee come to NREL to provide recommendations for future improvements to SAM. 
And the highest priority they identified was the need for a 3D shading loss calculator. And so uh, luckily, um, the Department of Energy agreed to fund the project, and so it'll be available in, in the upcoming version of SAM. And, and this is a slide that we just wanted to share with you what our thoughts were for the goals for our tool. Obviously, there are potentially several other shading tools out there um, that you can use. Some are uh, available uh, for purchase commercially. Others are online tools or, or things like that. So what we really want to do is enable experienced modelers, researchers, and students to perform basic analysis. Um, we don't propose that our tool handles every situation. Um, but I think it, we think it's important to have a free and independent tool that we can compare the results of against other tools uh, to help identify problems and improve the accuracy of all the models that are available. And in the future, we hope to be able to read and write common file formats for data that describe the 3D scenes. And, um, and we're, we're hoping to work with uh, other tool manufacturers out there to, to enable that um, intercommunication between the, the models. Um, and then we, you know, this is helping us enable do additional research into shading calculations and because SAM also happens to do solar water heating analysis, it works for, for solar water heating systems as well. Um, currently, you can actually go and download a beta version um, of the shading tool at the, at, the, um, at the link shown on your screen. Um, but, uh, and it's basically the same as what's going to be integrated into the upcoming version of SAM. So, so in the 3D shading calculator, there are um, objects in the scene. And um, there's two types of objects. There's what we call active surfaces, which rep can represent the portions of a photovoltaic array. That can either be a specific individual module or a whole array of modules. The shading calculator doesn't, doesn't really care, frankly. You can just use one big blue active surface to represent a, a whole array segment. Um, and then we have obstructions. And um, those are categorized as trees, boxes, cylinders, or roofs. And each of these um, kind of primitive objects has properties that you can change the shape of them, move them around and stuff, so that you can combine these basic objects to create more complex obstructions. And I'll show some examples of com more complex scenes as we go along. <coughs> In the editor, there's three ways to view the 3D scene. There's the, of course, there's the 3D view that, where you can rotate and spin around um, to see what, uh, what the geometry look, what looks like. And then there's a bird's eye view and an elevation view um, where you can see things from the top or from the side. And, and those views, um, the, um, sorry, the, <clears throat> the bird's eye and the elevation view, you can drag and drop and um, directly edit the size and location of objects. You can also underlay an optional aerial photograph um, to help you position where trees are or where the house is relative to a PV array. So, and all of this will, will, you'll see live as I go into the demo. So the, the shading tool also really needs import, um, uh, location, detailed location information um, to be able to calculate the shading losses. Um, this information automatically can come in from, from SAM or you can type it in directly into the shading calculator itself. Um, it can, you can enter a street address, and, um, and the shading tool can use uh, web services to find the latitude and longitude and time zone um, of your location. So, and so a quick slide about the outputs um, generated by the tool. The primary output is a month by hour table of shading losses. And, and the shading loss at each, at each point in the table represents the, the fraction of the area of the, um, of the solar array or active surface that's um, shaded by um, some obstruction. And, the, and it's only really representing the obstruction of the beam radiance. Diffuse radiance, of course, is, um, doesn't, isn't obstructed by objects. And so, um, and so it's, it's really the beam radius that you're lost that you're looking at here. 
And uh, I'm sure somebody would will ask, but we'll just say it now, that the losses right now are linear with shade area. And so this is an approximation. I'm sure, uh, it's, I'm sure many of you know that um, losses, energy losses in a PV system aren't necessarily linear with the amount of shade incident on the system. That's do, that depends on how the system is wired, whether you have AC modules or microinverters or DC optimizers and everything. So, so this tool for a typical string inverter configuration may underpredict um, losses due to shading. Um, but but it's a, it's a pretty good approximation, and we'll show some uh, quick validation or comparisons uh, to show that. So. And then there's, you can calculate hourly shading losses, and then since SAM supports multiple subarrays, you can calculate a shading loss for each uh, subarray independently um, using the same 3D scene. Um, a quick comparison to measure data, uh, just to suggest that the tool is doing something correctly. Uh, we, we modeled three systems uh, in, the sh in the shading calculator for which we had sole metric sun eye measurements, and then we compared the modeled energy losses on an annual basis uh, with both types. And you can see that in, in all three cases, um, the, the difference in energy loss estimates is less than 10%. And um, we, I, you know, we think that's pretty good because uh, with, uh, even with an on-site measurement, there's a fair amount of uncertainty in terms of um, you know, exactly how the measurement is done. Um, and things like you know tree growth and you know whether the shading measurement is done in the winter or in the in the spring where there may or may not be leaves, all those things can add to um, kind of uncertainty in the in the shading estimation. Okay, so um, now we'll enter the the main portion of the of the presentation, and I'll um, go into a live demonstration of the shading tool. So here, so I'm going to go and start um, uh, start the alpha version of SAM. Like I said, this is the um, most, in, most recent uh, internal version of SAM that uh, we'll be having a beta version for available it, hopefully within the next month or so. So it looks a little different, but it's pretty clear that I need to click here to start a new project. Um, I'm going to create a, a case um, using photovoltaic, using the photovoltaic model, the detailed model for a residential home. And click OK. And then uh, here's, here's the new um, SAM. The first thing I'll, I'd like to do is change my location to Denver. I'm actually going to try to model my own house, so uh, bear with me as I try to do that. Um, so I live in Denver, which is a very nice town. Um, well, you should visit. Um, so I'll select Denver as, as my location, um, and I'm going to leave the module option alone and the inverter option alone. Um, it's not exactly my system, but it's, it's it's good enough. Um, and I'll, uh, I'm going to note that the default system is fixed, and it uh, has a 20 degree tilt with a south facing azimuth. Um, so so that's, that's pretty close to uh, what the system is. I want, just wanted to mention that because when we go into the shading, uh, 3D shading calculator, we'll actually want to set up a panel with a 20 degree tilt. And South facing, so that matches up with what you specify here. So then on the shading page, um, I'm going to model a contiguous array that doesn't have any self shading. So I'm going to turn the self shading calculator off um, first, and then I'm going to leave the shady external shading factors alone, since really I just want to use the new shading calculator. So I'm going to click this button. And it'll tell me that um, my default location information has been transferred to this um, shading calculator. So that, that includes the address, latitude, longitude, and time zone. And then if I, for some reason, uh, need to go back and change my weather file to a different location, 
it's really important to remember to to double check that your um, your address and latitude and longitude and time zone in the shading uh, editor um, are updated as well. Okay, so the first thing I'll do is uh, um, type in my address. And then press enter. And uh, oh good, we've got some aerial imagery um, coming back from the internet. Um, I think it looks fine. Right here is a little PV system. You might be able to see it. Um, we can't zoom in any further. That's, that's the maximum resolution the mapping service will give us. And then I'm going to underlay this map in the scene. Um, so here, here's the sort of the navigation toolbar. Here's the 3D scene, the bird's eye view, and the elevations view that I talked about earlier. So when I click this, I'm going to switch over to the bird's eye view. And this is my um, editing panel here. Um, so I can hold down the control key while using the mouse arrow. I can zoom in or zoom out. And I can also move things around by holding down the shift key and moving the scene around from, from the side. All right. So the first, well, I'll zoom in a little bit so we can see a little bit better um, what's going on here. <clears throat> the first thing I'll do is create a box. Um, it's a little hard to tell on, on the image, but the PV array is actually sitting on top of a garage. Um, and when I create this box, you'll see, you'll see it, this red thing appears. And um, that's really just a cube. If I go into the 3D scene, you can see that it's just, just a cube like that. So I'll go back to the bird's eye view because it's easier to edit things in, in 2D, two dimensions. Um, so using these little magenta handles, as we call them, I can resize the box um, to match the, the size that, that's approximate in the image. If I switch to the elevations view, I can see that it was a bit tall. So I'll shrink down the vertical height of the box to make it look roughly, roughly correct. Back to the bird's eye view here. OK. So next, you know, there, there's a couple trees around here. So we need to put them into the scene, because they'll end up blocking a fair amount of the um, the shape. So back to the create menu, I'll, I'll select tree, and it's a pretty big tree that happens by default. It's sort of that the scale in the image um, was uh, was different than, than made sense by default. So we'll create the, the tr tree there. We can click the duplicate button and create another one that's just like it. And we'll move that one up here. It's, it's you, it's hard to tell from the image because the image was taken when there are no leaves on the trees, but there are actually um, big trees there in, in reality. <laughs> um, and then let's go back to the elevations view. Um, they're a little tall, so we'll we'll shrink them down a bit, maybe a bit, maybe even a little more. Okay. Maybe still a little big, but, but for the purposes of this uh, demonstration, we'll leave them alone. If I go into the 3D scene, you'll see there are two trees there and the box that we created previously. Looks nice. All right, let's create one more tree, and we'll just start by duplicating this one. Click duplicate, and then it, you can see it created another one on top. We'll put one off to the south here. And we'll, we'll, we'll trim it down even to a smaller size and shrink it down vertically even a little bit more. <clears throat> OK. I think we're ready to add our PV panels. So the next task is to add an active surface. So here's a blue box a rectangle that we can drag around. This represents a PV array. And again, we'll just model the little array section that's sitting on top of that garage roof. Um, right now, it looks like it's actually underneath the garage. 
So we need to go into the elevations view again, and I'll zoom in here so we can better see what's going on. And there's there's a little um, active surface, so we want to select the active surface and then drag it up so that it's basically sitting on top of the garage. Okay? You know, I've been doing all of this editing by dragging um, uh, dragging things, but you can also just enter the, the values, the sizes of things if you know what they are. So I could change the tree height by typing in, like, let's say 20, 24 here on the left-hand side, and we'll make, and I can click on the other tree and make that one, let's say, 23 units high. The units that we're using here are um, sort of, they're actually non-dimensional units. Um, it doesn't really meter, matter whether you're using feet or meters. Um, the, the values are all, the only thing that's important is that the relative spacing between, um, between uh, objects is, is correct. But um, if you know what the scale is on your map, if I were to go back to the location page, um, you can uh, enter, enter the scale on the map, and it'll uh, um, scale the map to uh, either meters or feet. Um, and then that, that can be an option when you're editing. I haven't set that up in this demo, but it, um, but it is a by default uh, possible. And then um, if I go back to the 3D scene, you can see that we've got a scene there with, uh, with a 3D geometry. Of course, the panels are, if you remember, um, the panels are actually at a 20 degree tilt. So I'm just going to type the 20 degree tilt in there. And you can see that the panels drop down to the, to the tilt uh, uh, that I specified. OK. So I think that looks pretty good. You'll notice that as I drag um, the scene around and rotate it, when in, in some positions, you can see a gray rectangle um, showing up on the blue active surface. That, that represents the amount of shade hitting the Hitting, uh, hitting the panels. Um, the, um, the shade fraction is shown below here, and the perspective that's shown is from the sun. So basically, when you're looking at your computer screen, you pretend you're the sun um, as you, the scene moves around. OK. And then um, we can go to the Analyze page and click the Diurnal Analysis button. And it runs the simulation for the shading analysis and calculates the percentage of the array that's shaded at each uh, time of the year. And you can see that in the afternoon, it's, it's pretty heavily shaded, um, which is what you'd expect with having these tr big trees right to the west uh, of the system. There's a little bit of shading right around noon at, uh, in the winter when, when this tree gets in the way. So, so just looking at the results briefly, you can see um, see that the, the shading losses um, sort of match match up with what you'd expect. OK. So we're going to click Save and Close here. And then it'll update. Uh, it'll ask you then if you want to update the shading losses for subarray 1 in, in the SAM tool. And you can click Yes. And what that does is it puts that shading table that was calculated by the 3D calculator into this, um, into this dialog box where you could otherwise enter your own data. Um, when you, and so you can verify that those ended up in the right place. If I click OK, I'll just go ahead and run the simulation using all the other default values. We'll see uh, what the results look like. So with the shading losses, my annual energy of 4,000 640 kilowatt hours. Now, I can go back and actually just turn off the disable the shading losses on the shading input page. And if I click OK and then simulate again, I'll just, um, so, net, so previously it's 4640. I simulate again, it'll say 5863. So you can see um, how many uh, kilowatt hours were lost um, from your production estimate due to shading. Um, 
So, so I think that's actually most of what I wanted to cover for this initial demonstration. Um, there are a couple other topics um, that I didn't cover, um, and I'll just mention them so that you know that they're available. And there's full documentation um, for the shading tool included, um, which includes all of this uh, information. Um, you know, you can uh, you can name objects, you can create complex roof shapes, um, you can create different types of tree shapes, um, you can handle multiple subarrays. For example, on the system design page, SAM supports multiple subarrays. And you can model um, that whole scene with multiple subarrays in the shading tool itself. And then you can import and export files and loss analysis, hourly analysis is also possible rather than just the diurnal analysis. So I'll go back to um, the slides here. So these, these slides will be posted online along with the recording of the webinar. So you can follow the steps that I took in detail if you wanted to try it out yourself. And everything that I showed you right now will work in the beta version of the shading tool that, that's currently available. Um, so some future plans. Uh, we hope to be able to add features that will let you import and export 3D scene information in various formats. Um, Currently, like I said, the, the shading tool only calculates beam irradiance loss factors, but there's a, a loss of diffuse irradiance too due to the view factor reduction. Um, and so we'll hope, we're hoping to add that capability as well. Uh, we're hoping also to add uh, scripting support um, and as well as uh, at least some level of estimation of nonlinear losses. One, another feature that we may consider in the future is uh, support for one-axis and two-axis tracking systems as well. Currently, the shading tool is only working for, for fixed arrays, which, which is okay because I think most, <clears throat> most uh, arrays that have non-irregular obstruction shading are, are fixed systems. So, so questions, um, be happy to entertain your questions. If you have a question, you can type it into the chat window, and we'll try to answer them on uh, on the phone and in the chat window for the next the beta version of the tool. The beta version of the tool is only available for Windows currently, but the new version of SAM that includes the shading calculator will be available for both Windows 32 and 64-bit, as well as uh, Mac OS. Um, for the latest version of Mac OS as well. So uh, we'll um, look at the chat window here and uh, try to um, monitor any questions that you may have. So there's a question. Um, will there be a webinar for the SAM update? That's a great question. And yes, we are certainly anticipating having uh, an update um, a webinar that details all the changes in the new version of SAM. I expect that will be sometime in, um, in uh, October, uh, once the new version of SAM is, is, has been released. So there's another question here. If, um, if you, we would like to analyze many buildings, not just one, is there a way to automate the process? Um, so, I think the answer to that question right now is sort of no, in the sense that the only way to enter um, the geometry for buildings into the tool is manually or using the interactive editing capabilities that I showed you. Uh, I think um, in the future, if we're able to add the scripting feature to the shading tool that uh, we'd like to do, then, um, then you would be able to automate some of that, that work. Um, but, but in the current uh, release, in the, this initial release of the shading tool, I think it might be a little difficult to, to automate a lot of buildings at once. <clears throat> OK. Um, there's a long question here that it may take me a moment to 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 read. 
Um, but I will do that since we have a couple minutes available. So the question is, um, how, what's the best way to um, compare this uh, 3D model to sun-eye shots? Um, so the best way to compare it to sun-eye shots is to, um, is to follow sun-eye procedures. Um, I think the typical uh, way to do that is to take sun-eye shots at multiple corners of the array and then use the SunEye software to, to merge those individual pictures um, into, into the one that represents the whole system. If, if that, that's true if you have one contiguous section of an array. If you have multiple subarrays, then you would want to take SunEye shots for, for each subarray independently and then, um, and then uh, and take those shading tables for each subarray which may have different orientations and enter them into the same shading or uh, subarray inputs or shading inputs for each subarray independently. Um, I hope that answers th that question. Um, a couple other ones here. Can we add the cost of land um, and how do we ta handle taxes on land? Um, in SAM, uh, taxes um, are handled in the financial model. So here in the financial parameters, page, you can enter um, uh, property tax rates and other tax rates as well. Land costs are um, part of the system cost page as a, as a capital cost. As, so that's where you would handle those inputs. <coughs> so a question about can you specify actual distances from objects, height of structure, actual dimensions of TV array? Um, yes, you can. So if I go back into the, uh, the shading calculator, if I open that tool, here's the scene that we created before. Um, you can go and click on the tree and say, oh, well, that tree is located uh, instead of at x equals 15, minus 15 meters um, relative to the origin, I can type in negative 10. And that tree will pop over to the um, location where, where I specified it. So, um, the, you know, for example, this box, if I know that the box is exactly, um, you know, seven meters long, I can enter seven, and the box will change size. Um, so I think I think the answer is yes. Um, so um, the question about scripting and two-axis tracking support um, about the timeline for implementing that. Uh, our, we'd love to do it soon. It's sort of um, it's sort of a balance between lots of other priorities that we have for development for the SAM tool, and also what um, the Department of Energy and NREL agree upon are the um, most important uh, things to be working on next. But we're hoping in the next year we'll have some something in that area, at least for the for the scripting support. <clears throat> okay. So what about um, obstructions, you know, on a rooftop. Uh, yeah, if you have a, a, a roof, um, let, let's, let's just spend a moment doing this. Let's say we have a big box here, and this represents a commercial rooftop, for example. Let's just make it a little bigger. And I have a HVAC unit on top. I can just create another box um, like that that sits on top of it. If I, if I want, I can even change its color so that we know it's a different little piece. Um, and then I'll just go into the elevations view and shift that box on, so that it's sitting on top uh, of the other box. All right, so if I go into the 3D scene, now I've got you know commercial rooftop, roughly speaking, with, with an air conditioner on top. And then you can... Uh, put your PV array segments around it, and then that will um, contribute to the, to the shading on, on the system. Okay. Um, where do we get default values using the financial aspects of the deal? Um, our default values come from a number of reports published by NREL. The, that takes surveys and talk and, and do other financial modeling to estimate what 
what these financial um, default values are. So um, those, uh, <coughs> so those, uh, um, there's a set of references on the SAM website that you can look at to um, to find out more information about our default values. Um, question about trees. Um, the trees in our system had no leaves at this time. The way to consider uh, uh, leaves in, in the shading calculation. Um, right now, the, the tr all the obstructions and objects are opaque, so um, so no light will go through them. We don't have right now support for trees with uh, different uh, densities of leaves um, that would let some light go through through the tree. Um, that's something that we could look at in the future. The other thing that we don't consider is tree growth or the possibility that a tree gets cut down in year 10 of a system's analysis. So, so there's a lot of um, real world uh, things that, that don't um, come into the model at this point. However, it's, um, our, our approach at the moment has been, well, something simple is a lot better than nothing at all. Um, uh, for, for modeling 3D shading, and there's so many uncertainties that even getting a rough estimate is, is a good start. Um, the P50, P90 input in the new SAM, that's a little bit um, unrelated to the, um, the shading uh, conversation, but, um, but I'll note that um, we do have the P50, P90 shading capability in SAM in the new version. Uh, it's located down here. Um, There's a question about using measured data. If you import your own data, will that also get imported into the shade tool? If you import your own um, shading data? Weather data into the data. SAM simulation. Does it use yes. that weather data for yes. the shading? Yes. Yes. And the answer is yes. Yes. Okay. yes. Um, yeah, you can enter your own radiation data um, into the SAM tool uh, on the location and resource page. You can download weather files directly from NREL Solar Prospector, or you can, you can use your own data um, as you wish. And then that data is used in the shading analysis. The shading losses are really only dependent on the uh, sun position calculations, which depend on the site latitude and longitude, um, which is independent of the irradiance you see at that location. There's another question about positioning objects relative to the origin. Is that position to the center of the object or to a near edge? Um, that's a good question. Um, the, the positioning of the objects is for a box is to the um, corner. I'll go into the shading tool again and we can see that. So if I put this box at x equals 0 and y equals 0, the lower left-hand corner of that box is at, is at the origin. If I put it at 5 and 5, then you can see that it's um, that's where where it ends up. So boxes are positioned relative to to the corner. Um, and then th there's another object such as a, a cylinder. Um, the cylinder object, which we didn't use in the demonstration, um, let's go to the bird's eye. That's positioned to the center of the cylinder, and and the radius is a, um, or diameter. Sorry, is used to define how big it is. Um, <clears throat> question, uh, do the default financial aspects get updated in different SAM versions? The answer is yes. Every time we release a new version of SAM, we do our best to um, review with experts at NREL who do financial and cost analysis to make sure that the default values used in the tool are the most, um, most relevant and up-to-date numbers that we can, we can have. Um, the, the down, you know, what, you know, it's, uh, the numbers in SAM aren't representative of, um, of you know, today's numbers. Um, when things are happening very quickly in the solar industry, uh, you know, those, those prices and costs can change pretty quickly. And we don't in propose to um, track all of those changes, but rather to, um, every time we release SAM, to provide something that's representative of uh, what's happening. Um, does O&M include mowing? Uh, that's really up to you. 
um, to specify, to decide whether O&M costs include mowing uh, the grass. Um, if, if, uh, if it costs money to do, to do that, then it should be included in the cost. I would say that I don't think our typical, our default O&M cost does include uh, so I've talked about that as a contributor. Here's a question about reducing time steps for, for shading calculation. Um, I think the question isn't specific just to shading, but rather for PV system simulation overall. Um, we are looking to um, allow the option for sub-hourly PV modeling um, if that data exists, and so I think that will be available soon. Um, I think uh, newer data sets that NRL is working on will also have the option for 30-minute for um, solar data for some locations. Um, and of course, when comparing to measured irradiance and or system performance data, it's useful to be able to do sub hourly simulation. Um, and then at that point, I think it makes sense to, to consider what time resolution is most appropriate for, for the shading scene. Um, yeah, here's a question about grouping, um, grouping objects. That's a great question. Um, in the, this first version of the tool, we haven't um, added support for grouping objects to create one complex shape out of uh, out of multiple sub shapes, but we should we'll definitely um, uh, add that. We, you know, we've thought about it, um, but it hasn't made it into this version. So we'll be hopefully adding that in the, in the future. Um, so there's a question about the ability to place multiple sun eye shots on an array and interpolate the result in shading between the shot locations. Um, to my understanding, uh, the sun eye software that's included with the um, sun eye device includes that capability to interpolate the the shading. Um, I might be wrong on that. I'm not a everyday user of their tool, um, but I I think that's um, part of um, the sun eye package. There's a question about a moving shading object. Um, yeah, I, that's a good uh, question. Uh, we don't support uh, moving objects currently, but if we were, when we're able to add the scripting language capability to the uh, 3D shading tool, then you'd be able to go through and uh, change the location of, uh, of objects as needed. Um, question about which day is considered for each month. Uh, we use the, the 14th day of each month, which is roughly the mid middle of each month, um, for, for calculating the diurnal table. So we have time for about uh, a couple more questions here. We have maybe eight minutes left in the time allotted for the webinar. Um, at that point, uh, we will close things down and will be uh, just a reminder that we'll be, this session is being recorded and that we'll be placing the recording and the slides on the same website for, for your uh, enjoyment in the future. If you have additional questions after the time for questions has ended, you can always email the SAM support for feedback on the shading calculator specifically. Yeah. And you're also welcome to post to the SAM support forum, um, which is uh, monitored regularly. <clears throat> so a question about the um, whether the shading losses can be calculated for each day. Um, there is an hourly calculation option, which essentially lets you calculate the shading fraction at every hour of each day in the year. If I go to the Analyze button and I click Hourly Analysis, then it'll go and compute the hourly 
um, loss factors and let you export a CSV file um, <clears throat> that you can look at in Excel that includes the shading loss at each hour of the year. Yeah. Once you, I'll, I'll go ahead and save that. Um, and you can co copy and paste or load that into the hourly option um, in, in, a, in Sam. Oh, I'm not sure where I put it, but it's somewhere on the computer. Um, so that's up. There we go. Shade.csv. And here you go. Here's the the hourly hourly shading um, information. question about um, whether the new version, including the 3D shading, is going to be an update or a complete new installation. Um, it's going to be a complete new installation of SAM. Um, as you can probably notice, uh, lots of things have changed. Have changed um, and so uh, it will require a new installation. But the download size is roughly the same um, and it shouldn't be any different than uh, updating from four previous versions of SAM. Okay, well, I don't see too many more questions coming in, so I think we'll wrap up a couple minutes early. I want to thank you for your participation. I hope it's been useful to you. Um, like I said, you can review this information um, on our website, uh, and we anticipate making this new software available to you soon. In the meantime, please download our beta version of this shading tool. Uh, it's a standalone piece of software for Windows that you can, you can try out. Um, and uh, when once we are ready with our webinar series for for the next year, we will post that and make announcements. And we hope that you will join us again soon. Have a good day.